How can historically white institutions redesign themselves around principles of equity and inclusion? You have more young men of color on college campuses than ever before. Also by design, by default, you have more young men of color dropping out of college than ever before. Can peer mentorship improve educational outcomes for both colleges and high school students? When I was a brother's dad, I don't think I would know what I was going to be doing after high school. The plan is to go to college, and after college, I plan on opening an architectural firm. Once you put these populations in the driver's seat, you start to realize uh, the changes that these institutions need to grapple with and, and the way that they need to redesign themselves. In 2013, Darielle Vasquez left his hometown of Harlem to attend Bard, a prestigious liberal arts college in upstate New York. The change of culture and geography was jarring. You got kids playing guitar in the grass with like flowers in their hair, you know what I mean? And it's like to two different worlds entirely. I never sat in the classroom with uh, white students before. Most of my peers and classmates were on free or reduced lunch. A lot of us came from neighborhoods like mine, public housing projects, you know. Um, so coming to Bard was both a culture shock in terms of race, but also in terms of class. As a historically white institution, Bard College has been looking for new ways to address its own inequities. There has been very problematic relationships between community and, and academic institutions in the past that have informed some impressions that communities have of sort of institutionalized forms of racism. The institution needs to rethink the way things are done. We're not the problem here. One approach schools like Bard have followed is to treat students as the experts of their own experiences listening to the student experience, listening to the structures and systems that are in place on campus means that we have to confront our own issues. And as we go through that practice with students, that is also a form of civic engagement. What happens when you take those people who are closest to the problem, often furthest from the resources? What happens if you actually give them those resources, give them the opportunities, right, and position that group to lead the work, right, and not just be objects of it. They tend to have uh, the most creative solutions, right? They, they tend to be those who can see the problem and, and understand it and break it down and address it better than anyone else. Darielle began to notice his Black peers shared discomfort. Many of his friends had already begun to transfer or drop out entirely. I still remember the exact moment where um, Brothers at Bard was conceived. I was sitting in the parking lot with Harry Johnson, who's the co-founder of Brothers at Bard. A couple of our peers had already transferred. Like they didn't even make it through the fall semester. And he's just like, hey man, I wanted to let you know, like I'm out, I'm leaving Bard. I think this is gonna be my last semester. I remember telling him like, number one, you can't leave me here, right? <laughs> like, like, you know, um, and then number two, let's give it one more semester. In the spring of 2014, Darielle and fellow Bard student Harry Johnson started a club to support their Black peers through the college experience. This idea that came about of trying to start the support group, and then that, you know, coming into the spring, uh, we started having regular weekly Brothers at Bard meetings. If you zoom out, it seems like, oh, these guys got together and further isolated themselves. Like, it was like they formed a group that was exclusive just for them. But for us, that became the vehicle or the medium for us to then become more engaged with campus and challenge the institution to rethink and reframe itself. The following semester, Darielle and Harry made a proposal to Bard's Trustee Leader Scholar Program. Their vision was to pair college mentors with local high school students. What we realized was when you do same generation mentorship, it's like the, a mirror that's put up, right? Where there's like, wow, this person looks just like me. They listen to the same music I listen to. They're on Instagram the way I'm on Instagram. Right? Like they're, they're into the same stuff, right? Um, 
but like it makes me feel like I can literally be them tomorrow. For brothers at Bard, Kingston High School felt like the perfect partner to launch the initiative. It is a very diverse school. We have different ethnic backgrounds and different cultures. We have people of different economic statuses. And it's kind of like a melting pot for the city. There's about 17% black students, about 23, 24% Hispanic students, 56% white students. When I heard the term brothers, I was like, brothers? Wait a minute, that sounds like they might be African-American guys. Let me find out what's going on. As the roles of high school educators grow to encompass social support, programs like Brothers at Bard can help provide invaluable resources and experiences. If we got guys in the room that there's no other place in their life where they can open up, they can now here with us. The uh, Brothers at Bard is a brotherhood. It's laughter, it's love, it's a safe space and you always got that little cushion to lean on if you got an issue. So yeah, we really support each other like that. Brothers at Bard mentors roughly 50 Kingston High School students each year, teaching them life skills, aiding in academics, and organizing trips to colleges and conferences. It's kind of started out as a character building program, but over the years, the program has expanded. We added academics and we have tutoring for the boys. And now we've added a book club where the kids are reading important pieces of historical information around, you know, growing up as a black boy and what that means. The kids go on a retreat yearly. We've added college visits. They go to DC in the summer and they participate in a think tank. For students at Kingston High School, the results have been impressive. Our black graduation rate of male students was probably about 48%, 46%. That's not good. Some of these at-risk kids are very hard to connect to the school. With Dariel coming in with his team, I know it's a great opportunity for these kids now to hopefully be successful and graduate um, with their peers, you know? And that's exactly what happened. We saw those success stories. Our graduation rate since then has increased every year. The last time I checked our data, our black graduation rate was somewhere around 80, 81%. I cried that day because I knew we were gonna be able to reach some of our kids who I thought we were gonna lose. Today, Brothers at Bard partners with organizations ranging from public high schools to day camps to multinational corporations like J.P. Morgan Chase. Here you have Ramapo for Children, which seemed like a perfect partner for us because uh, they were local. They had all these hundreds of acres of land and they did these low ropes exercises that complemented our curriculum really well. Uh, we can you know, have the young men of color reflecting on the challenges, right? So they're doing these things physically and, you know, zip lining or all, you know, facing their fears. And then they sit down and have a conversation with us at a classroom at Ramapo. I worked at Ramapo two years. After work, we'd have workshops. We'd talk about our day, highs and lows. The partnership over the summer also grew because they provided employment opportunities for our young men to work with even younger students. The challenge I faced that Brothers That helped me with was like my first job. So I worked at Ramapo, Brothers That introduced me to that. So they helped me through the process, getting my paperwork in, my working papers, doing the interview. And it was all very new to me, but it really grew me into it and helped me get it started. Brothers at Bard's partnership with J.P. Morgan Chase is helping the group begin a new era of action as a consultancy program for outside organizations. I originally started as Bard College being the academic partner for J.P. Morgan at the Fellowship Initiative. All these years later, contracted Brothers at to be the main implementation partner of the Fellowship Initiative. Coming in to do a lot of the mentorship and social emotional elements of it. The other thing that came out of that was us realizing Brothers Act's model as a sort of nonprofit hybrid consulting organization. We come in and 
we implement our model there. Darielle and his team hope to turn Brothers at Bard into the leading national model for near-peer mentorship, acting as thought leaders in an ever-changing educational system. I hope uh, all schools have this opportunity to participate in programs like this because it can only help them make them stronger. Everybody can use a mentor. You know, we can't go through life, life by ourselves and we can't accomplish everything we want in life by ourselves. The future generation, they need to know that the whole world is out there for them. You know, it's available to them. And to, just to just to set that playing field and make it level, make it even for all students. It's made so many people better. It's made so many people's lives better. And if, if this was like throughout the, the country, the amount of people it could change, it'd be amazing. <laughs>